On November 17th, I released my Alder Lake S review, which included a deep dive into the 12th generation Alder Lake microarchitecture. I have had roughly a week since then to learn more about the architecture and play around with various settings in the UEFI or BIOS. I wanted to overclock my i9 12900K, but I am currently waiting on my LGA 1700 brackets to be delivered. I am currently using the LGA 1200 brackets and I want to be sure that I am getting the best CPU temperatures possible before I begin to push the CPU to its limits. What if I told you that I could make Alder Lake energy efficient while increasing performance? In this video, we will take a look at what I have been able to achieve with Intel's Swift Generation CPU. My first goal is to make Alder Lake S as power efficient as possible while lowering temperatures. My second goal is to keep the performance roughly the same. Let's take a look at my PC specs. Nothing has changed in the past week or so since my initial Alder Lake S review. I have an i9-12900K, 32 gigabytes of RAM, clocked at 4800 MHz, with the RTX 3080 and Fantex 1200 watt 80 plus platinum power supply unit. Starting with Alder Lake's voltage, the i9-12900K default CPU vCore voltage average is 1.26. In my first review, I was able to undervote the i9-12900K vCore to 1.16 volts, but I have taken it even further and lowered my vCore to 1.11. In addition to lowering the vCore, I have overclocked the efficient cores from 3.7 GHz to 4 GHz. The performance cores will continue to use their default frequencies. We see the differences between the stock vCore results against my undervolted vCore results. With the eCores overclocked to 4 GHz, I was able to drop the voltage, temps, and CPU wattage. While using 1.17 vCore settings, the CPU package reported 191 watts on average, which is a 33 watt drop from the stock wattage, and that is with 8 overclocked efficient cores. I was able to drop the temps by 9 degrees Celsius. While using the 1.11 vCore settings, I was able to decrease the CPU wattage by 40 watts and drop the CPU temperatures by 13 degrees Celsius. It is possible that I could get better temperature readings once I receive my ALGA 1700 melting brackets. The main focus and benchmarks at the moment would be on the 1.17 CPU vCore voltage. This is because I want to check for stability and see if I could keep the CPU performance roughly the same as the stock settings while lowering the voltage. Later in this video, I will focus on the 1.11 CPU vCore voltages and benchmarks. After undervolting Alder Lake S, we see a decrease of 93 watts. That is 25% less wattage being pulled from the wall. So far, Alder Lake is already appearing to be very efficient based on my undervolting testing. My test shows that the ARGB fans running at full speed adds a total of approximately 15 watts to the total system power consumption. At the bottom of the chart, I have subtracted the ARGB fan wattage to show the power consumption for only the CPU, RAM, and motherboard. This comes out to approximately 260 watts. Now that I have decreased the power consumption by 93 watts, or 25% less wattage being used by the entire system, we will now take a look at the benchmark results. I have included three results to show several configurations for my CPU. All three results are using DDR5 4800 MHz with the stock timings. The first result shows the stock i9-12900K with vCore 1.26. The second result shows the stock frequency with a lower voltage at 1.17 volts. And the third result shows the 12900K with 1.17 volts with the efficient cores overclocked to 4 GHz. The first two results are within the margin of error, so that's great because there doesn't appear to be any performance loss. The last result shows how 300 megahertz over the stock e cores practically gives you free performance with lower voltage and wattage. I was able to increase my scene bench score by 523 points, and I was also able to complete Rock Cruncher 318 microseconds quicker. Although the differences might seem minor, you must remember that this is practically free performance sitting on the table at lower wattage and lower voltage. Now we will take a deep dive into the Alder Lake's efficient core microarchitecture when overclocked from 3.7 GHz to 4 GHz. The performance cores will perform roughly the same since I have not overclocked them. Therefore, I will not test them at the moment, but later in the video, I will benchmark the performance cores when I overclock the DDR5 RAM. 
The results that are shown on screen are using DDR5 RAM with stock frequency and timings, which is DDR5 4800 megahertz. Starting with the L3 cache, we see that four of the eight slowest cores, numbers 17, 19, 21, and 23, all show lower latencies, which should allow better throughput. Core 23 shows the largest drop of 1.8 nanoseconds. Lower is always better when it comes to latency. The L3 cache latency average improved from 14 nanoseconds to 13 nanoseconds for all cores during my testing. Now we will look at various workloads while running the E cores at 4 gigahertz. The final results will show how much data can pass through both clusters when they are working together. In my original video, while only using the 8 E cores at 3.7 gigahertz, I averaged 175.55 gigabytes a second across several workloads. And now I am averaging 187. 0.09 gigabytes a second with the E cores overclocked to 4 gigahertz. Now we'll separate the E core cluster results. The results show how well each cluster works independently on data without transferring data to the opposite cluster or performance cores. Cluster number one increases by 4 gigabytes while cluster number two increases by 7 gigabytes. Cluster number one total shows 158.7 gigabytes a second and cluster number two shows 158.92 gigabytes a second. They are now more or less equal in performance. That means that if Intel's thread director and Microsoft's Windows 11 scheduler ensures that certain workloads can stay within the cluster, we could see up to 318 gigabytes a second from the efficient cores. Now we will take a look at a single efficient core and see how well it performs. In the original review, I hit 283 gigabytes a second for a single efficient Atom core, but this time around with a 4 gigahertz overclock, I increased that number to 286 gigabytes a second. The best case scenario was 433 gigabytes a second with the 4 gigahertz overclock, which is a 26 gigabyte increase over my original stock results, which only came out to 407 gigabytes. Now we will take a look at the absolute best case scenario for all of the efficient cores working together. Going deeper into the Alder Lake's microarchitecture shows how much data the cores can crunch. We see an increase of 365 gigabytes, pushing the overclocked efficient atom cores up to 2.79 terabytes. That is a respectable increase over the 2.42 terabytes, which used higher voltage in my original Auto Lake S review. So now we will look at Alder Lake's undevoted V core set to 1.11 while increasing performance. So far I have accomplished all my goals, but I attempted to overclock the DRAM as well. I was able to increase my DRAM stock from 4800 MHz to 5600 MHz. DDR5, 4800, 5000, and 5600 are the main results that I will be focusing on. Now we will take another deep dive into the microarchitecture. We see that the DRAM bandwidth scales nearly perfectly with the theoretical DRAM bandwidth. From 4800 MHz to 5600 MHz, I was able to increase my DRAM bandwidth by 18% from 75.7 GB a second to 89.4 GB a second. The small data set benchmark shows a decrease from 66.43 nanoseconds to 57.07 nanoseconds, which is a 14% decrease. The larger data set shows a very nice decrease of 75.40 nanoseconds to 68.45 nanoseconds, which is a 9% decrease. The performance core latency average for all individual cores came out to 59.10 nanoseconds with DDR5 5600 megahertz. That is a large drop of 7.09 nanoseconds for the performance core's individual latency to DRAM. The efficient core latency to DRAM only dropped by 3.55 nanoseconds, which is still a pretty good drop. The efficient core's latency was already low in my previous video. Earlier in this video, we focused on the efficient cores at 4 GHz since I did not overclock the performance cores. Now we will focus on both the performance and efficient cores since I have overclocked the DDR5 RAM to 5600 MHz. In this chart, you will see that I have separated the performance core and efficient core results to show my performance increases with the DDR5 5600 MHz overclock. We see an increase of roughly 10 gigabytes with all eight performance cores working together. Auto Lake continues to impress me with only 1.11 voltage being used during 100% loads on the CPU. This test will show the top performance for one efficient core. 
It is a true single core test that should tell me exactly how quickly and how much data the efficient core can compute. With the E-Core frequency being overclocked to 4 GHz, the DRAM being overclocked to 5600 MHz, and the latency being lower, we see that a single Atom Grace Monk core performance has increased by 14% over the stock setting. This chart also reveals a few more interesting details. With the V-Core using 1.17 voltage and DDR5 clocked at 4800 MHz, with the E-Cores overclocked to 4 GHz, we see a minor increase which is still great because it's basically free performance. When overclocking the DDR5 to 5600 megahertz, we see a large increase in performance. The additional DRAM bandwidth and quicker access to their data allows the efficient cores to work more effectively. It is going to be interesting to see how much more performance is waiting within these Atom cores. When the CPU was running stock and under voltage settings with the DDR5 4800 MHz, we see that the results are within a margin of error. Only a 0.1% difference between the first two results, so those results are fine. When I overclocked the E-Cores to 4 GHz and the DRAM to 5600 MHz, I increased my score by 576 points. In 7-Zip, the compression test shows a 13% increase. The decompression test shows a 4% increase and the total rating shows a 8% increase. Now let's take a look at Rye Cruncher using various voltages and overclocks. We can see how the performance scales as I undervote and overclock the CPU and DRAM. Overclocking the E-Cores to 4 GHz with the DDR5 clock at 5600 shows that the benchmark completes 2.02 microseconds quicker. That is roughly an 8% gain in performance while dropping the total system wattage by 93 watts or in other words, using 25% less power than stock voltages. My ultimate goal was to undervote lower wattage and temperatures while keeping the same stock performance or near stock performance. I went from the CPU V-Core with the setting of 1.27 to only using 1.11. I overclocked the E-Cores to 4 GHz while overclocking the DDR RAM to 5600 MHz. Initially, I thought that I would need to underclock the performance cores, but they are running fine. My CPU package wattage decreased from the stock setting, which used 224 watts to only using 184 watts on average. The wattage from the wall outlet decreased from 368 watts to only 275 watts on average. That is a drop of 93 watts from the wall outlet while increasing performance. I decided to take another deep dive and show my actual performance increases at many different levels within the microarchitecture. I could have simply ran the typical synthetic benchmarks that we always see and released this video, but I wanted to show the same type of deep dive performance information as I did in my initial Alderlake S video. This was mostly done for two reasons. The first reason being that Alderlake S is Intel's brand new desktop variant of their hybrid technology. The second reason being that the current software has not begun to utilize Intel's new microarchitecture with the big performance cores and the little efficient Atom cores. To add to the second reason, I decided to perform my own personal benchmarks and skip past the software limitations as much as possible and to extract as much information as I could. Although not all software utilizes Alder Lake as microarchitecture properly at the moment, I could still show the exact increases at the microarchitecture level. This would give a better representation and prove that although software may not always show big increases, it would show that Auto Lake S processor is actually performing better than what we could see. I believe there are still more ways to gain performance with the low V-Core settings. One way could be the ring buzz and other various settings to tweak. I will continue to learn more about the platform, but I am taking it slow with all the lakes since this is a completely different beast than my first generation beast. This is only my first week of tweaking settings while undervoting and overclocking, so stay tuned for future videos. Feel free to leave your comments below and be sure to check out the article on overclockedingame.com. There's also a comment section there as well. Once again, I appreciate everyone who watch and support my videos. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button. And if you like my content, please consider donating to my PayPal or Patreon. Thank you.